In this lesson, we'll use what we've learned so far to create an enhanced IK rig. By the end of this lesson, we will create an IK system that gives us more control over the knee for stylized results. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll head over to Layers. What I'd like to do is see through this mesh. It'll be a lot easier to work with our bone objects that way. So if we were to go ahead and select the mesh layer, right click, we can now choose object properties and let's go ahead and turn on see through and choose OK. Right now I do have this mesh skinned. If we were to go to each bone, you can go ahead and rotate and, and take a look. So what we'll do is go ahead and work with what we have to enhance this rig. It's just a standard leg rig. There's nothing special about it at all. Alright, so what we'll do first is get started by cloning this entire rig. We're basically going to create a drive system and then this current rig that's already skinned to is going to be used to deform the character. So let's go ahead and double click on our root to grab each bone and now we can press control V to copy this the system. Let's make sure we have it set to copy. Now we'll choose OK. Alright, so next what we want to do is increase the size of this new system and we could also create a layer for it. So let's go ahead and take a look at our script editor. Go to the listener window and we could always just go in and, and clear everything out. Just choose clear all. Alright, great. So remember to increase the size of our bones we can work with very simple max script. It's going to be dollar sign dot width. And currently the width of each bone is 5, so we could always increase this by 3, so we'll have the width set to 8. And we can do the same thing for the height. So that's going to be dollar sign dot height equals 8. All right. Now you can see that the nub here should probably be replaced. Let's go ahead and select the nub, we'll go ahead and delete it. We'll go to our new bone object, the ankle bone that we've duplicated. Let's grab our bone tools and we're going to go ahead and choose create end. Alright, so next it might be a good idea to again have all of these stored in another layer. I'll go ahead and just duplicate on the root to grab all of the new bone objects. There we go. We're going to create a new layer and we'll call this JDRV for drive joints underscore leg underscore layer. Alright, we'll want to make sure the default layer is active so when we add new objects they're automatically added to the default layer and not to any other layer we may modify later on, let's say hiding this layer that we've just created after we have finished with it. Alright, so now that these objects are in place, the next step then is to start tweaking our original rig. So let's go ahead and grab the shin bone, and we're going to go ahead and separate it from the thigh. Let's go ahead and use our unlink tool. Alright, so now that it has been unlinked, the next thing we'll want to do is go to the thigh bone, and we're going to go ahead and create a new end for it. So with it selected, let's go back to our bone tools. I'll go ahead and close out the script editor and we'll choose create end. Alright, so now with this end here, take a look. What we could do now is create two separate IK systems and tie them to the thigh rig and our shin rig. Let's start with the thigh. With that selected, we'll go in and we will create a history independent solver and connect to our nub. Beautiful. Now, We'll do the same thing for our shin rig. Let's go ahead and select it. We'll grab our history independent solver and we'll connect to our ankle. All right, so just to kind of show you what this does, if we were to go in and select the first goal, you could see, all right, we'll be able to separate the knee. And then the next one is just to get some control over the lower part of the leg. But we'll tie both of these back to our drive system. So, we only have a few more steps. Let's go ahead and 
rename these two goals. So the first one is going to be IK thigh. The last one, IK shin. All right, great. So now what we can do is create an auxiliary knee control to drive this section. And we could use a helper for that. Let's go to create helpers. We'll create a point helper. Let's add that to our scene. Going back to the modify panel, let's go ahead and set this as a, a box display. And now with it selected, we can use shift A to align it to the thighs IK solver. Feel free to adjust the size since this is going to be a control. You might want to increase this a little bit more so it's easy to select. Great. And for the name, we could always call this anim underscore AUX for auxiliary knee. Zero one. Okay. Let's now go ahead and clone this with control V. We'll make this a copy. We could always rename it from here. This is going to be anim leg. So this is going to be our primary leg control. Zero one. And we'll choose OK. And now with shift A, let's go ahead and quick align it to the ankle area. We could just go ahead and align it right to the IK goal since it's matched to the, uh, the ankle's position. All right, great. So now that this is in place, let's go ahead and now take the thighs, IK goal, and now our shin's root, the root bone, and let's go ahead and use our link tool to link these to our animation control. Take a look at what this does. When we grab the animation control and we start to kind of move that around, you can see that now we're getting some really cool stylized results in the knee. All right, really exciting. But now we need to control this as we would an IK system, and that is what our drive chain is for. Let's go ahead and bring back the drive chain and we'll connect an IK system to it. So I'll go ahead and grab the, the thigh that we made, that we cloned, and with that selected, we'll go to Animation, IK Solvers, and we'll grab the History Independent Solver, and we'll connect that to the ankle. When we mouse over, it should say ankle too, unless you went ahead and renamed those objects. You might want to do that later, but either way, let's make sure it's connected there. All right, so now, here's what we can do. We can go ahead and take this IK chain. Let's go ahead and rename the solver here to IK leg. And we could have this linked to our main leg control. Now with it still selected, what I'd like to do is go ahead and add this to the new layer that we've made, just so when we hide this object, we can quickly get to the, the other IK goal that we made for the shins rig. All right, so with it still selected, let's go ahead and choose Add to add this to that layer. And now we can go ahead and hide this layer. We'll want to now go ahead and grab our IK goal for the shin, and let's go ahead and link this to our main IK leg. All right, great. Now, going back to our drive chain, let's go ahead and unhide it. We'll want to take our animation control here, and let's go ahead and link that to the, the duplicated shin. All right. So, the shin that we want to link to is from the drive chain. That way, when we start to move our main animation control, let's go ahead and move that around. You can see that the leg will start to move as an IK system should. Very exciting. And if we'd like, we can go to our auxiliary knee control and animate more stylized effects. So the last thing we'd want to do here, apart from just going in and renaming these objects, is to go ahead and select our animation controls, and we'd want to Alt, right click, and choose Freeze Transform, just to make sure that as we start to tweak this rig, we could always get back to our default position by Alt, right -cl clicking, and choosing Transform to Zero. Very cool. So in this lesson, we learned a technique for creating an enhanced IK rig that we could use for limbs. Really neat.